We have one more type of mean that you should be able to compute. It's called a weighted mean. Suppose you had a set of data like this, but you didn't want to simply find the average of these. You want to weight them differently. For example, you want this 80 to be twice as valuable as this 91. This is called a weighted mean, and weighted mean is commonly seen in the computation of student grades. So you've got a scenario here. We want to find Cindy's final grade. And the grade is broken into quiz average, project average, test one, test two, test three, test four, just like our class. And these are the weights for each of those. 15% of the grade is quizzes, 10% project, 20% for test one, so on and so forth. And then these are the grades that she got out of 100. So she got a 77 quiz average, a 91 project average, an 80 on test one, a 68 on test two, an 82 on test three, and a 94 on test four. Now I want to go through the computation to figure out what grade Cindy should be assigned as her final grade. Well, the weighted mean you can see over here is computed according to this formula right here. X bar, which again represents our mean or our sample mean. I could have used mu here, but just use X bar. X bar is equal to, we need to take the sum of the X times W's first. The X times W's are the amount of points scored X times the weight, of course, in decimal form. So 15% is 0.15, 10% is 0.1, 20% is 0.2, so on and so forth. And then we need, need to divide by the sum of the weights themselves. So W over here stands for weight, which is the percentage, and X is the number of points scored. So let's find Cindy's final grade. Well, according to the order of operations, we would do this X times W first because it's set off in parentheses. So we've got our X column here, our W column here. Let's simply add on another column for X times W. And 15% of 77 is 11.55. 10% of 91 is 9.1. 20% of 80 is 16. 15% of 68 is 10.2, 20% of 82 is 16.4, and 20% of 94 is 18.8. .8. So we found all the X times W's, or the products of X and W. We need to find the actual numerator value by taking the sum of all those X times W's. If you take the sum down here, you get 82.05. The sum of the X times W's is 82. 0.05. Now we need to divide by the sum of the weights. Well, the sum of the weights would be, if you add these percentages up, you get 100%. And because we're doing computation, 100% is equivalent to the number 1. So to find x bar, we need to take the sum of the x times w's and divide by the sum of the w's. So we get 82.05 divided by 1 which is 82.05. So Cindy got a B as her final grade. So you should be able to compute the mean, median, and mode from the raw data. You should also be able to compute an approximation of the mean from a frequency distribution table, and you should also be able to find a weighted mean. Now let's go back to the question that was brought up previously. Why do we compute a mean, median, and a mode? Why not just one of them? What's the value of all three of these things? Well, to do that, we're going to look at a couple of common distribution types. You can see here four histograms. Let's talk about these four specific distribution types first, and then we'll answer the reason for why people look at mean, mean median, and mode. Now, not all data types or data distributions are going to fit one of these four types of distributions, but these are four common ones. So let's go through each of them. This first one here is called a symmetric distribution. And the reason it's called a symmetric distribution is because you could draw a vertical line and you could fold this thing in half and you'd have the same on both sides. So, or roughly. So this is a symmetric distribution. Over here, we've got what's called a uniform distribution. Uniform distribution means you have the same frequency on all the classes or something very close to that. Down here, this is called a skewed left distribution. Anytime you have a tail that goes off to the left, that is called a skewed left distribution. Whereas over here in this last one, 
this is called a skewed right distribution because you have a longer tail going over to the right than you do to the left. Again, not all data distributions will look like one of these four, but these are four common distributions that you should know. Let's now address the question of why we compute a mean, a median, and a mode. First, hopefully it's fairly clear why people would want to know mode. They want to know what's most popular, what shows up most often. So for an example, in this symmetric distribution, the mode, of course, is the, the value corresponding with the tallest bar. So in this case, if that's an eight right there, eight is the mode of this data set. Down here, the tallest bar is this one. So this value of 10 here is the mode of the data set. And here you have a mode of six for the tallest bar. So mode is fairly clear why people would want to know that. It's the most popular, the most common. Notice also that mode was not computed here or not mentioned. That's because all the data values have the same frequency. It's uniform. So in this case, this data set would be considered to not have a mode. Let's now analyze the mean and median and the difference between the two. So first for the symmetric distribution here, notice that whenever you have a symmetric distribution, the mean, the median, and the mode are actually all the same thing. So for symmetric distributions, the mean, the median, and the mode are all the same thing. So the mode was eight, so that means the median is eight, and so is the mean. And of course, if this wasn't exactly symmetric, just slightly off, they'd all be really close to eight. Over here, technically a uniform distribution is also a symmetric distribution because you've got a line of symmetry here. And so the mean, median, and mode would all be the same. Of course, mode is not mentioned because all the data values have the same frequency, so there is no mode. So the mean, the median would be right there in the middle. Now, what's more interesting is down here when you've got a skewed left distribution or a skewed right distribution. Notice here that the median and the mean are both pulled to the left of the mode, whereas up here, the median and the mean are the same thing as the mode. The mean and the median are pulled to the left in the direction of that tail. Over here in the skewed right distribution, you've got the mode right here. And again, the median and the mean were pulled to the right in the direction of the tail. However, notice that for this one here, you've got your mode. The mean is pulled further to the left than the mean, than the median. Over here on this one that is skewed right, you have a tail to the right. The median is pulled to the right, but the mean is pulled further to the right. Ultimately, what this means is whenever you have a tail, one direction or the other, the mean is pulled further in that direction than the median. So whenever data is skewed left or right, The mean and the median are both pulled in the direction of the tail, but the mean is pulled further in that direction. But the mean is pulled further in that direction. If this was even more extreme, for example, let's pretend there were there was a bar all the way out here. So we had a really super long tail going over this way. Then the mean would be pulled a lot in this particular direction, whereas the median would still be close to where the mode was. Any data point that's extreme that lies way far away from the bulk of data points is called an outlier. Ultimately, what this means is outliers have a major effect on the mean and not so much on the median. Outliers greatly affect mean, especially if they're more and more and more extreme. But not so much on the median.